For as far back as I can remember, I've had feet issues. From the time I was born, the doctors looked at me and they're like, this guy's got some messed up feet. They tried different things to try to help me with that. And so when I see a study by a major company that does nothing but, well, almost nothing but footwear and got started in the world as footwear is fine with having a 30.3% injury rate, I wanted to make a video about this. Now, I don't know how long ago this was published. I just happened to come across this lately. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about is kind of my experience with shoes and feet issues and everything like that before I get into going over this. So just briefly, I've always, like I said, had these feet issues. And when I started working when I was 13, I started working because I really wanted to get a pair of shoes that would be comfortable on my feet. And my parents were like, dude, like we are tired of spending all this money figure this out on your own. So I did. So my dad, dad got me a job. I got a job, right? I got this job and I'm like, all right, the quest is going to start. So almost every single week, if not more than like twice a week, sometimes twice a week, right? I would go and buy a new pair of shoes. And my parents are like, you are obsessed with shoes. Now I said, I'm obsessed with finding something that's actually comfortable. You know, like it's crazy because when I walked barefoot, I was fine. I had no issues whatsoever when I walked barefoot. And then I put shoes on and my feet hurt. I couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, I'm always walking barefoot everywhere as much as I could. Even socks. I really, I don't like socks. I own like three pairs of socks, maybe. So I went through this cycle. I mean, I had at one point, I think 450 pairs of shoes. It was getting out of hand. And one time when I was living out in Pennsylvania, I had this pair of Brooks Beasts on, whatever variation of it that, that it was. And it was supposed to be this, you know, controlling, supportive shoe. And I was out for, a, you know, like a walk run. I was doing a couch to 5K. And during the runs, my feet were really hurting. And it got to the point where I actually vomited. That's all I'm going to say about that because I was in so much pain. So I took the shoes off and I did the couch to 5K with no shoes on the way back to my house and my feet had no pain in it. And then shortly after that, I had to come back here to, uh, to for a family event to Cleveland and I like to listen to audiobooks. So this book comes out, bear, uh, 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 run, uh, Born to Run, right? So I'm like, all right, this is about the amount of time the book was that I had to drive back. It was a you know six or seven hour drive. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to listen to this book. And everything made sense to me. So I started on this barefoot running path or barefoot a shoe path. In order to understand how our feet would develop without shoes, we need to look no further than barefoot cultures that currently exist around the world in places like Asia, Africa, South America, and Central America. All right, so the, the feet, I can't see it. Oh my gosh, I can't see it. Here we go. The feet of barefoot individuals are characterized by strong, sturdy arches, thick calluses on the underside of the foot, and perfectly straight toes that are splayed well apart. So let's look at that, right? Here we go. So here's some pictures of people in areas who don't have shoes. Now, I've seen this, actually. One of the post offices that I worked at uh, was in Whitehall, Pennsylvania. And we had a lot of people from, like, India and, like, parts of Africa. And they actually had such big feet that they didn't fit in conventional shoes. They always had to wear flip-flops because their feet didn't fit in anything. So here's some, here's some pictures, you know. Here we go. Here's what, you know, feet look like when you don't have shoes. And then, you know, if you click on this, you see what happens when you put feet in shoes that aren't, you know, meant to actually support them. <clears throat> there we go. Here we go. I mean, look at this. I mean, here's the difference between somebody in shoes, like all their life, you know, like the pointed shoes, the dress shoes. And then here's what your feet would actually look like had you not done that. I mean, look at the articulation on some of these these feet it's crazy look at this one i mean look i mean this guy could grab stuff like it's a hand so then we go into children so humans have gone unshod for millions of years it is only in the last few centuries that people have started wearing shoes and they talk about how it's 
you know, the foot structure and everything and about how it would be better if your kids spent more time, uh, children should spend more time barefoot to encourage a healthier foot structure. Because it's kind of like if you put your kids in, you know, like, I don't know, if you wanted your kids to grow up, but you put them in a cast that's the exact size of what they are now, you know, what are they going to do? How are they going to develop? What are the barefoots of uh, walking barefoot? And then there's there's a bunch of benefits here. I mean, just <clears throat> your gait changes. Your feet are much more comfortable. A lot of people that I know like to be barefoot in their house and everything because it's so much more comfortable. All right, so better control of your feet or foot position when you're striking the ground. Improvement balance, pr appropriate, uh, appropriate, blah, 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 blah. Proprio reception and body awareness, better foot mechanics, which can lead to improved mechanics of the hips, knees, and core, maintaining appropriate range of motion in your foot and ankle joints, as well as adequate strength and stability with the muscles and ligaments, relief from improperly fitting shoes, which causes bunions, hammer toes, and other deformi uh, deformities, stronger leg muscles, which support the lower back region. So if you're somebody that has, I'm gonna actually talk about, I you know, I'll talk about this, but, if you have back pain, if you have hip pain, if you have knee pain, I'm going to talk about that right now. Here is one of the reasons why a lot of people have issues with feet. All right, so if we can imagine this, this is just imagine this is a skyscraper and you can imagine like a tall skyscraper. Skyscrapers have to be vertical. If they're not vertical, they won't be mechanically sound. So if you look at this, this is this is a vertical building, right? And this it has no shoe on, right? And you got the cross pattern, so you got you got the the glutes, you got the quads, you got the hamstrings, and you got the psoas or abs, right? And they are in a perfect cross, and the body works off that cross. The lower body works off that cross. So they support each other. That way, you don't have anything doing more work than the other. If you go up to here, you got the same exact thing. So you got the shoulders, you got the chest, you got the uh, mid back, and then you got the shoulder. Did I already say that? And then you got like the traps and everything like that, right? So you got everything back here. You got the shoulders, you got the chest, you got, and then you got the lower back, and they work as a cross. They support each other. So when you go, you know, do whatever it is, when you're walking, everything supporting each other, it's almost like, uh, like a zero gravity, but not really, but kind of like it, it goes against, you know, it's so it's mechanically sound. If you put yourself in shoes, you put this wedge underneath, all of a sudden now you got that same cross system. However, if you imagine in this situation, this is the people in the building, it's your cells. They're all vertical, exactly how they're supposed to be. But if you do this, if you put a, a, a wedge underneath your foot, all of a sudden the people in the building are facing forward and they're getting really tight. So you're going to be anteriorly tight because everything in the front is tight and it's trying to support itself from falling. Everything in the back is getting weaker because it's not doing its job because you're not vertical anymore. And that's when you start leading into trouble. Most people do not have pain in the front of their body because it's stronger and it's bringing everything forward. You see a lot of this in a lot of people these days because the back isn't doing its job. It's not bringing the shoulders back. It's not putting everything where it's supposed to be. Your lower back is completely screwed. Your mid back is completely screwed. And this is why people have pain because your ankle's not in the right place. Your knees aren't in the right place. Your hips aren't in the right place. Your pelvis isn't in the right place. And none of your spine is in the right place. The next here, what is the job of the feet? The foot is a complex mechanical structure of the human body composed of 33 joints, 26 bones, and more than 100 muscles, tendons, and ligaments that all work together to bear weight, allow for locomotion, and transmit force. Transmit force means it tells the rest of the walking system what you are walking on, and then it knows how to walk. Here's another one. It's a function as a rigid structure for the weight bearing, and it can also function as a flexibility structure to conform to uneven terrain. The foot and ankle provide various important uh, functions, which include supporting body weight, providing balance. All right. Daily activity and minimal footwear increases foot strength. So if you can think about this, when you put your foot into a shoe that has a bunch of padding on it, you have to walk harder. And because you have to walk harder, 
you, you you get a lot more damage to the knees, the hips, the blowback, the pelvis, everything like that. And so it's not surprising to me when Nike, and this is actually on Nike's website, and this is their their you know this shoe that they're charging hundreds of dollars for. And if you scroll down to the bottom, of course they're kind of cool looking, right? But I mean, what do we need this for? And everybody's like, well, it's because modern uh, stuff that we walk on. Have you ever walked out in nature? What is forgiving about nature? There's thorns, there's rock, sharp rocks, there's like little pieces of boulder, there's pieces of all kinds of things. There's things that can bite you. So it's not exactly the most, uh, you know, hospitable place to walk on. So if you go to the bottom, this is all about, you know, advertising, advertising. The Nike React Infinity Run uh, reduced running injuries by 52% compared to the Nike Zoom in a study of 226 men and women during a 12-week blah, blah, blah. Our study found that 30.3% of Nike Air Zoom Structure 22 runners experience an injury but only 14 and a half of Nike React Infinity Run runners experienced an injury. Like they're bragging about this, right? They're bragging about, now if somebody didn't have shoes on, they don't have these injuries. If you really go deep into this, which I, I didn't want to do in this video, but if you go deeper into this, you find the people who live in areas that don't have shoes, they never have foot injuries other than like if somebody breaks glass somewhere or like a lot of the farmers who are using this really bad, uh, you know, pesticides and stuff like that, they will have issues with their feet. But in normal conditions, they have like no foot injuries whatsoever. And there's no study that has ever proven unless it's, you know, paid for by, you know, such and such company that's profiting from it, that you are going to benefit from wearing these shoes. You have to walk harder. And as you just saw in that little demonstration that I did there, your foot is in the wrong position, which puts your knees out of the right position and puts your hips out of the right position and puts your pelvis out of the right position and it puts your back out of the right position. So instead of being vertical like you're supposed to be, you're kind of leaning forward and it puts, it's any mechanical system. If it's not in the pro proper position, it can't function correctly. So you, those of you who are paying hundreds of dollars for these shoes that they're bragging only had 30.3% of people who wore them have injuries. And then they did something else in this, you know, propaganda here that did 14 and a half percent, you know, injuries. Can you imagine? So a hundred people go out for a run. Let's just say 15 of them in this better scenario are going to have an injury. How is that, you know, how is that possible? Now, the only time you're going to see that with barefoot runners is if they step on glass, step on a nail, and half of the time, you know, even that is not going to uh, damage anything at all. <clears throat> anyway, that is this part of the video. So bottom line is, I found barefoot shoes. Had I found barefoot shoes 20 years ago, I wouldn't have probably had to have the surgery that I had. Wouldn't have had the foot pain that I had. Could have actually run. Could uh, you know? Wouldn't have probably had as many weight issues as I had. But what can you do, right? And and uh, weight really is largely diet. And I've had issues with diet, but that's not about what this video is. So I'm going to put a link down below for the sh the zero shoes. This is my favorite barefoot. This is not an infomercial. This is really like thirty point three percent is acceptable to these people. I don't understand that. I don't understand how people just keep buying these shoes. They're so narrow. You've seen what they did to people's feet comparatively to what your foot would look like if you didn't have these shoes on, right? If you just had no shoes on, your foot would be completely fine. So go check them out. See if you like it. Use the link down below. Like always, like a link is going to give me a little bit of a kickback. If you don't want to use my link, fine. Just go to Zero Shoes or whatever, Vivo. I have tried Vivo their quality, maybe it's better than it used to be. Their quality was not great. And for the cost that they, they are, I just, I was like, no, this ain't happening. So, but go check out Zero Shoes. It's the only real shoe that I recommend. I recommend it actually just go in barefoot if you can, but most people, you know, A, won't or can't do that. So that's just not a possibility. But it's crazy to me how 
people are all right with putting a cast on their on their foot that has this big glob of stuff underneath of it and you know it just is not good for your foot it's kind of like trying to do push-ups on a mattress why would you do that you want a hard surface to actually put a, as much force through why would you put something soft underneath your foot and not, not expect it to atrophy and be something that, that's just not usable to you. Anyways, that's uh, comments, questions down below. Like, subscribe. I don't touch on this subject too much just because, it's, you know, there's only so much you can say about it. But like I said, when I saw that 30.3, I was like, wow, that is ridiculous. Anyway, talk to you in the next one.